Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling. Really appreciate you guys making a little bit of time of your day to watch the video as usual. And today we're going to continue the uh, series I've been talking about doing on swim jigs. And I'm going to go over some techniques that you can do to help trigger a bass to bite a swim jig that normally wouldn't. And we'll go over trailers a little bit too here. So we'll do trailers and some of these techniques to trigger bass to bite. And real quick, I just want to remind you, everybody out there, if you guys are looking for any of the block of old school jigs, got them back in stock at Baitworks. We have a good selection up there, up and up and running now. This is one of my favorite uh, combos for the month of May here for the dirty water if it's high. Is a black and chartreuse with a black zoom super chunk on it. Um, this is a really good muddy water color here. That water visibility you have is like uh, under 12 inches of visibility. This black and chartreuse with the black, this is actually the black neon uh, zoom super chunk on there is just a killer, killer bait in the month of May here. Um, not only can you pitch and flip this thing, but you can also swim it like a swim jig too in the 3 8 ounce size. But I'll include the Baitworks link in the description. If you guys are order, interested, you can order them exclusively at Baitworks in Springfield, Missouri in the link in the description. Great way to help support the channel too. Okay guys, let's talk a little bit about the swim jig uh, techniques for triggering strikes. First of all, before I get into this, I want to I wanna go over a little bit over the trailers on the things too. Because the, the trailers, in correlation with the size and how you retrieve it and all that type of stuff and the color, all dictate trigger and strikes. Um, once you, you know, hit on that right combination of, of, of all of those together. But to keep it simple, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the trailers first as far as the trailer action and color. I use two different trailers on this based upon the mood of the fish. I'll use the zoom super speed craw on there and this this is sort of like a rage car or something um, this this the tails on this thing really vibrate and push a lot of water right here so it, cre it creates a lot of uh you know vibration in the water that the fish can pick it up from a distance with a rage craw type trailer or the super speed craw on there and the other type of trailer is the zoom z craw now this has got curly legs on it too but the way that the Z crawl flaps, it's a lot more subtle. It flaps and it doesn't push a lot of water, but it has a lot of action. So this type of a trailer would be better for a visual strike, not necessarily for drawn bass from a distance for the vibration. So the two trailer types I use are the big vibrating one, like the super speed crawl or the rage crawl and the zoom Z crawl in there. That's the two profiles there. Um, and I usually let water clarity dictate on that. Like I said, usually if I'm fishing low light conditions, dirty water, um, I want a, a trailer that uh, moves a little bit wa more water and, and, uh, and throbs and thumps a little bit. And um, if not, in the cleaner water or bright sunny days, I don't want that much uh, vibration. So I go to the more subtle, uh, just the subtle legs tw moving and twisting without pushing all the water. So, that's the color thing. And also the color on the trailers, guys, that's just a mix and match deal. That can be, uh, there's a lot of different color variations that are that work good. You just sort of have to mix and match them based upon your sunlight conditions, based upon the water clarity, based upon the color jigs that you're using. But for the most part, I'm either using some type of watermelon or green pumpkin for a bluegill imitator. Obviously I'm using a blue or black and blue or black on the black and blue jig. And then on the uh, white ones, I'm using some type of a pearlescent or some type of a shad type of a trailer, that type of deal. Keep it pretty simple. So anyway, here's the deal as far as triggering the strikes on it. Um, a lot of the strikes that you get on a swim jig, they come from anywhere. They can come from open water. They can come from around cover. They can come out of grass. You just never really know where you're going to get a bite on it. But there are some triggers the things you can do to actually entice that bass to bite it a little bit better. One of the things you don't want to do on a swim jig very much is just throw it out there and just reel it in. You know, you can catch some fish doing that, but um, it's not going to be near as productive. Sort of like a jerk bait. You know, if you don't put the right action on a jerk bait, you're not going to get near the bites. And it's the same with a swim jig. The key on a swim jig, guys, is when you throw it out there, what you want to do is you want to keep your rod tip high. Don't ever put the rod tip low to the water or point it straight at the water. I like to keep my swim jig at about 10 to 12 o'clock out there. As soon as that bait hits the water, you know, I bring it up to the surface 
And then I just start shaking it like that as I'm reeling it the whole time. I'm just shaking that thing. And I'm wanting the swim jig, you know, to just go, just go be going like this all the time through the water. And, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, as I'm jerking it, I'll let it fall down a little bit, then I'll pull it up again, but I'm never reeling it. I'm always, you know, just twitching that rod tip as I'm reeling it the whole time, shaking it pretty hard actually sometimes. And this is especially important um, if the bass are aggressive on the bait. You know, normally if the water temperatures are over 70 degrees um, and if you're running it past some type of a cover, particularly like the edge of a grass bed, around a stump, around a dock corner or something like that, shaking it like that will trigger that bite more than just straight reeling it. That's a really important technique with it. Also, another thing that triggers a bite on a swim jig is you you get harder strikes and more bites if you keep that bait in sight at least half of the time. Now, sometimes I'll reel it through the water and I'll drop it out of sight and I'll bring it up a little bit, but most of the time you want that bait riding high in the water column, you know, where it's almost like a top water lure because most of the swim jig bites you get, if you're fishing it right in shallow cover, you're gonna see the fish boil on it, almost like a top water, it's that close to the surface. The only exception to this would be if you're fishing a swim jig and reeling it like through submergent grass, like say for example, if you're fishing some eel grass or you know some type of a mill foil where you're dropping that bait down and you're trying to reel that bait through the grass under the water. Now they do that a lot in Florida. They do that some up north on some of the northern waters like a Mississippi River. Um, but for the most part, for the, the type of fishing I'm talking about, I'm keeping this swim jig in sight throwing it in really shallow water and uh, you know keeping that rod tip high. Now, just because you keep that rod tip high and um, you're jerking it all the time doesn't mean you're fishing it fast. As a matter of fact, I don't like to fish a swim jig fast. I, what I like to try to do is I like to try to keep it as high in the water column as I can and as slow as I can. Now, this is particularly important as the water gets dirtier. In general, what, you, what I like to do, it doesn't really matter what the water temperature is, if I'm fishing water visibility that I consider muddy, like under 12 inches of visibility, I'm usually using a light head. I'm usually going with like a 3 16 because the 3 16 um, fishing it on you know 30 pound braid, 50 pound braid, or 25 pound test fluorocarbon, heavy line like that, when you're using a light jig with a trailer that pushes a lot of water, you can keep that thing high in the water column and you can get and you can keep it going real slow like that if, if the jig is light. Now as the water clarity gets a little bit clearer, um, a lot of times I'm going heavier. I'm going to 3 8 ounce, sometimes even half ounce if, I, if I'm bringing it past cover in water visibilities that are like greater than two foot. Say for example if I'm fishing you know a lily pad field and you've got two and a half foot of visibility, the water's pretty clear. I'm going to be using like a 3 8 ounce or a half ounce, something that I can reel faster and keep it higher in the water column. And a lot of times the speed of that bait going faster across the surface in that clear water will generate more strike. So um, let the speed of your retrieve be dictated by the water visibility that you're fishing. So it's pretty simple technique, guys. I mean, swim jigs, they're I think they're one of the funnest baits to fish. I mean, it's exciting when a bass hits it. You can cover a lot of water with it. It catches good fish, it catches quality fish, it catches big fish. So um, the whole point of the two videos I just wanted to make here is pay attention to your colors, you know, experiment with your colors based upon the forage, you know, experiment with trailer colors, and you know, don't just reel them in. Just put that action on the bait, you know, twitch it the whole way back to the boat and you'll definitely get some bites on it. Now's the time to fish it, guys, May and June are the two best months for swim jigs. Um, if you guys fish swim jigs, you know what I'm talking about. If, you have, if you're just new to swim jig fishing and you, and you are unfamiliar with how to do it, now's the time to do it. Get back into those shallow coves, shallow creeks, throw it on bare banks, throw it around cover, any whatever cover you have available on the lake you're fishing. And uh, you know, you're gonna get some bites doing it. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated and we'll see you later.